Well, Tricks of Jack are tales about a trickster in the mountains. Everywhere I've gone in the world, I've found tricksters. But in Thailand, it was Sri Ten and Chai. So I thought, well, oh, back home in the mountains, it's Jack. So I started writing these stories in Thailand. I wrote most of them while I was in Thailand. On a Fulbright, I had a Fulbright to go teach storytelling in Thailand. I said, that's funny. Mama used to whip me for telling stories. And they sent me halfway around the world and pay my way. Well, this last story is about old Jack. And it's just the last part of the last uh, uh, chapter. As much as old Jack took delight in telling them outlandish stories, which he'd begun to believe his own self, one of the biggest stories what happened to him wasn't made up at all. And it wasn't something he'd done, but what his grandkids done to him. Kind of unthought of it, so to speak. Actually, they nearly done him in. You see, it was like this. Old Jack, every spring by Easter time, he'd figure it was time for his annual personal spring cleaning. That's around the same time the women folks would clean the houses by scouring all the floors and walls, getting the winter residue out of the pots and pans, and washing and airing out all the bedclothes. That was also the time for mucking out all the barn stalls. This would be just at the right time for ramps to come up in some of the low places in the woods. Now, ramps is like what that Shakespeare writer fellow over yonder would call rampions. But in the mountains where Jack was from, they just called ramps. There's a kind of wild garlic or leek and smell to high heaven. When Jack was younger, he'd bring a mess of them to school, and the teacher had to call school off because of the stench. But ramps are better than castor oil for your annual constitutional internal ablution. Now this particular time what I'm telling you about was the same time they had put indoor plumbing in the house where old Jack was living, much to his dismay and objections. He said, it don't seem right now to build an outhouse inside the living and eating house. It's downright unnatural. Old Jack was right proud of the outhouse he had, for it had been built by the WPA. It had German side and planking, what was painted white. And I don't mean the old time whitewashing. It was really the only white paint on the whole place. But now the floor and the seat was genuine cement with a lead with a little screen window to keep the blowflies out. Boy, it was fancy. The government built these upgrade outhouses to improve the health conditions in the mountains and also to give those WPA men something to do. Of course, old Jack already had a nice outhouse with a little half-moon decoration. It was even a two-holer, and the new cement was just a one-holer. Even after the indoor outhouse got installed, old Jack could still use the outdoor outhouse, uh, unless it was raining or real cold, and he'd appreciate the convenience. His grandkids thought it was about time for old Jack to modernize with the times so they figured all on their own to get shed of the old outhouse, but not tell the grandpa Jack about it until it was done. They know it was going to be a whole lot harder than getting rid of the old two-hole outhouse, but they just pushed down the hill and burned. But now this cement base outhouse was an entirely new challenge. One of the boys had been working in the mines and knew how to use dynamite. So he brought home four sticks to use on the outhouse. They started early one morning while old Jack was still asleep. He didn't get up as early of a morning as he used to. They figured if they'd put one stick of dynamite under each corner of the cement pad, he'd do the job for sure. So that's what they done. And then wired that to a little trigger around the corner of the barn where they wouldn't get hit by none of the shrapnel. By the time they was all set to go, old Jack had woke up and was headed towards the outdoor outhouse unbeknownst to anybody, even them what was preparing the dynamite trigger. It was his spring cleaning time, and the night before he'd had a big supper of cornbread, fried taters, a bowl of pinto beans, and a whole big mess of ranch. Well, boys, don't you know, about the time old Jack had sat down, the boys round the corner of the barn was all set to blast her off to the moon, so to speak. They let the littlest boy count for the countdown because he'd already started learning to count to school. They even asked him to count backwards. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, 
two, one. The trigger man yelled, let her up. And just as the kaboom sounded, the boys all peered round the barn and seen the outhouse rise right straight up. Right then the front door of the outhouse flung open where they could see old Jacka sitting on the throne with his hat floating up towards the roof, his hair standing straight up, and his eyes bulging out like a granddaddy bullfrog. The boys had thought they'd done in the grandpa. The whole flying contraption hovered there for a while, then wafted over about 50 feet towards the barn and landed just as all the walls fell outwards. There sat old Jack, right in the middle of the barnyard, on the cement throne with his overhauls down round his ankles. He looked at the boys and pronounced, it was a blessed thing. And now I've got to interrupt myself right here and explain that in the mountains to say blessed thing, it don't necessarily mean godly or religious like. It mainly just means fortunate. So he said it again. It sure was a blessed thing. The oldest grandson, Robert, ventured to ask, what was a blessed thing, Papa Jack? It shows a blessed thing. I didn't use the indoor outhouse, so the whole house itself would be gone by now. I don't think old Jack ever did take to liking to use that indoor outhouse. And the loudest house spring cleaning was never the same after that. 